What's up everyone? All right, today I'm gonna show you stuff about taxes because this is something that I have not talked about at all on my YouTube channel before. And that is just because I was concerned about people taking my advice as like an accountant because people always talk about that, but I'm not an accountant, I'm a YouTuber. Don't take my advice as like tax certainty, but as a drop shipper, you have online income and you do have to pay taxes on this income. It is frustrating to me how often people message me and are like, hey, do I need to pay taxes on the money I earn? And it's like, guys, it's like basics. If you live in a country that has an income tax and you earn money, it doesn't matter how you're earning that money, you have to pay taxes, okay? That's a part of, you know, having a healthcare system and being protected by an army, being able to be peaceful. All that kind of stuff comes from contributing to your government, which provides for you and allows you to live a peaceful life. Obviously, this is not less necessary now in modern times, but don't be bitter about taxes. Like, okay, yeah, it sucks that I have to pay like a third of the money I earn or a quarter of the money I earn to taxes. But if it wasn't for the government, I wouldn't be able to do this in the first place. So yeah, I could get bitter and angry, but the reality is like, I have a great life, so I don't mind paying taxes. Um, let's get to it now. How do I handle taxes with my dropshipping business. So you always want to make sure that you are, you want to talk to a CPA. You want to get, get there. You need to have a professional's opinion on how you're operating things, but you do also need to have some kind of bookkeeping system so that you can have data to show these people that they can work with. Right. Um, so also at the beginning, when you start out, don't worry about this stuff too much. Really what happens is you want to get to a point where you're earning money and you're like, okay, now that this is for real, how do I do this properly? Don't let taxes stop you from drop shipping in the first place. That is absolutely absurd. You really shouldn't need worry about this stuff until you've been drop shipping for a while, you're earning a more regular income and you're actually trying to grow that income, right? So that being said, this is what I use. And what's awesome is I have an affiliate link for this. And unlike all my other affiliate links, this affiliate link will actually get you half off of this software for a whole year. And it's not that expensive. It's like 10 bucks a month or 11 bucks a month. So with the affiliate link in the description, you can get this for five or $6 a month. What I like about self Intuit Self-Employed is that it syncs up with your PayPal account. So all of your PayPal transactions just get imported or exported into Intuit Self-Employed, okay? And this is great when you're starting a new business, you're not an employee, and you have mixed accounts, right? So I use money from my PayPal account to buy food, to go out and, I don't know, get a video game or to do stuff that isn't business related, right? That is tricky and not something you're supposed to do, you know, if you're actually running like a business and you have employees, right? But as a self-employed person, it's easy and this actually makes it really convenient because all that I have to do is look at the transactions and then I either click business or personal. If it's business, it's counted as income. And I pay, I have to, I'm obligated to pay taxes on that. And if you're self-employed, you probably have to pay your taxes quarterly. Um, I don't know what the rule is, but like for me, for example, I'm supposed to pay my taxes quarterly, but I usually end up paying them yearly and I take a hit for that. I end up paying a fee of like 30, 40 bucks when I pay my taxes because I didn't pay quarterly taxes. You want to pay quarterly taxes because one, it's going to help your cash flow. You're not going to have one point of the year where you just have to pay a bunch of money. And also you're not going to pay those fees, right? But anyway, you go down and you just mark them as business or personal. It's really, really easy. And there's actually also an app from Intuit Self-Employed where you just click business or personal on your phone. So every time you do a transaction, then a day or two later, you'll be like, oh, that was the transaction. Um, was it part of my business or was that something I purchased for personal use? If you purchase it for personal use, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna get counted as taxable income, basically. So, right, okay, these are all, this is all business income, right? What we want to find is a charge. So if I scroll down, there we go, a charge. Okay, this for example, this is a debit card purchase from AMPM, which is a gas station. So this, 
If I were to mark this as a business transaction, that means that I would not be obligated to pay tax on it because it's an expense that is necessary to run my business. This would reduce my taxable income. I believe that in tax terms, this is called a Schedule C deduction, but I'm not entirely positive about that. But this was a personal transaction. So if I did mark this as a business transaction, I would be lying. And that is not what I want to do. I want to be honest about my taxes, right? So I would click personal like this. And what that will do is that means that, okay, yeah, I spent $24, but that was for personal reasons. So I have to pay tax on that $24. Whereas if this was marked as a business transaction, then it would reduce my taxable income. Whereas because it's marked as a personal transaction, it does not reduce my taxable income. Okay. So now you understand. All right. So all of the transactions get imported from PayPal. So this is great if your business exists in PayPal, which mine does, right? So everything goes through my PayPal account. So by exporting it like this, I don't have to keep track of anything myself because this database is reliable, right? So, but you guys might be like, all right, I have hundreds of transactions a day. I understand that it's just like a click, but I don't want to click on this over and over and over and over again. Well, the good thing is most of this can be automated. Unfortunately, I have not figured out a way to automate the income from other people's PayPal accounts. Because what happens is you can make these things called rules. So let's go down to an expense because expen uh, the rules work best with expenses. So here we go. Uh, we went to OK Walk, which is a Chinese food restaurant. So this is obviously personal. But what I can do is click personal. And then I can go over here and click add rule, okay? So this will look at the description of the transaction and it's going to make a rule for all future transactions or all previous transactions and it's going to categorize it, right? So we can see here that anytime I purchase an item from this or anything from this Chinese place, right? then it's going to be marked as personal, okay? Obviously, I don't get Chinese food that often, so this isn't gonna like save loads of time. Uh, but if we close this, now what it just did is it applied the rule to that one transaction and also looked at all of my previous transactions and applied the rules to that, right? So also, again, another restaurant. So I need to do personal and then add rule. Every time I use my credit card at this restaurant, it's going to mark it as personal automatically. So I won't need to do this one by one anymore, right? And so it works really well for expenses. Like here's, here you go, here's a reversal, right? So this is actually a business thing and we can add a rule where if it says reversal in it, then we can categorize it as business, okay? And then we're going to apply it to all the previous transactions. And this time, the rule is actually going to change a bunch of other transactions because I've had other reversals that I haven't categorized yet, right? So i got to wait a second for it to finish here. Um, there we go. So it just applied it to multiple transactions that contained reversal. At least it was supposed to. Sometimes you have to use the match exactly case, um, in which case I didn't do that here. But so you can see here that there we received $84 and then it gave that 84 bucks back. So basically nothing happened. So business, business, we earned 84 bucks, lost 84 bucks, nothing happened, right? Um, and there's, there's a little bit more to that. Like when you're refunding people, it's supposed to be marked differently for your taxes, but there's, that's more advanced stuff. Really what you need is a system that doesn't take much time that gives you an acceptable database that you then work with somebody to fine tune and make like much more up to par. But really you need something that creates that database without you having to log every single one of your transactions, okay? For example, here is another purchase that I made. I recently bought Mario Kart 8 on the Switch, and I paid for it with my, uh, with my business account. So this starts getting a little bit debatable because I am... That, that, that's what's interesting about being a YouTuber because in traditional business, it's quite black and white whether the thing you're using is for uh, business use or personal use, right? Like if I'm buying a printer for my work, okay, 
business use, obviously, you know, but I can't really justify the chair that I'm sitting on at home while I'm eating lunch as, you know, part of my business. But when you're a YouTuber and you're making videos about everything, there, there begins to be an argument there where you can be like, okay, there's obvious things that are obvious are like cameras so you can record YouTube videos. Yeah, that's great. But what if what if you travel somewhere specifically to make YouTube videos? At that point, you're on a business trip. And when you're on a business trip, every meal can be deducted. It's it's really interesting how like I, I that's one thing that I'm gonna do when I get back to the States is talk about the the implications of being a YouTuber and using YouTube as a business and what that means for your tax deductions because there's there's interesting situations like like for example some people I, I'm not I'm not declaring this um, I'm like there's a lot of like when I buy food in Nicaragua I'm counting that as my personal income because I believe that I, I don't know enough about taxes yet so I'd rather err on the side of overpaying than err on the side of underpaying and committing crime right but that being said, there are some people who would say that almost most of the things that I'm doing in Nicaragua are business expenses because I am here for business. I'm literally here to develop my business and spend time on my YouTube and my dropshipping and all of that. So it's, it's really interesting, right? But I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. So the, the downside to these rules is that they don't work well for these received PayPal payments, which kind of sucks. Like I have to manually click all of these because I can't add a rule that just has a blank description and says if it's a positive amount from PayPal, then mark it as business because that gets applied to ev any everything. There is no way for me to make a rule on this that sees, okay, someone sent me money from a PayPal account. 99% of the time, that means that they're paying for an item on eBay and it's not personal. So it should all just be marked as business. But unfortunately, there's no way for me to do that. So I just have to go down and mark everything as business. Luckily, what would really be great is a really simple filter where it just looks at if there is income. If it's a positive transaction where I received money, it's related to business. I don't just get handed money for personal reasons. The only time that would happen is if like I have a job and I get paid into another account and then I deposit money into my PayPal account, but that doesn't ever happen. So really, I really, really, really wish Intuit would just allow this because then it would almost completely automate this entire process. Okay, so now we've talked about the whole business versus personal thing. We've talked a little bit about that this syncs up with your PayPal account, so you don't have to add things yourself, right? Now, also what's great is that this also syncs up with TurboTax. So when it comes time that you're going to pay your taxes, you can just export this whole database that you've made and you've talked to a CPA and managed into TurboTax, and then pay your taxes that way. It makes everything, like, it really demystifies things a lot. And Intuit Self-Employed has a lot of good, let's see, good programs, good, uh, it's it's just, they have, a, there's a lot of access to information there. And people, especially dropshippers, really, taxes is something that freaks a lot of people out. But you really don't need to worry that much about it. Especially because when you need to start worrying about it, is when you're at the point where you're earning money and dropshipping is starting to change your life. So, okay, that's a good problem to have. That's like being like, man, I have too many sales to process. I don't have the time to process this. There's tons of people who would kill for that problem. They got a problem of not having any sales in the first place or not having the, the perseverance to realize that it's not about just getting rich or getting a bunch of sales this month. It's not about, oh, seeing if this works out. It's whether your motivations and intentions align with being self-employed. If you really, really wanna be self-employed, it's a not a matter of if you can, it's a matter of will you do it? Will you keep trying? Will you not give up? Because ultimately, there's hundreds of different ways, if not thousands of different ways to earn money for yourself. Whether that's online or like just doing something where you're your own boss, there's an almost limitless way to go about doing that. The trouble is that it's not commonly taught. You can't go to school and get a degree in being self-employed, right? So it's, it's tricky, but really it's not that bad. And taxes is something people freak out about, but you don't have to, right? And obviously there is a, a homepage that shows all of your income and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not so great about keeping up to date on this. So if I went to the homepage right now, it would show like negative 50,000 because I haven't, 
clicked on these, which then makes them get counted. They don't get counted until you've marked them as either business or personal, right? So I have to go through and then just click on all of these transactions, right? Just like, woo! But now you guys understand how this works and you can also like if, say that you have a more traditional job and you have mileage and you have to keep track of work expenses you can keep track of all of that using intuit self-employed so if you guys want an easy automated tax solution intuit self-employed is fantastic especially because you can work with an accountant and it's going to greatly reduce the amount of time your accountant spends right because it automates the process and then they just have to overlook existing records and like fine-tune everything so you're gonna pay your accountant less because your accountant has to spend less time doing things because it's all most of it's already taken care of they just have to kind of you know the ducks are kind of in a row they just got to be nudged a little bit by the accountant okay so Thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate your time, attention, and effort. And if you want to use this program, check out my referral code in the bottom link there, and you will get 50% off of Intuit Self-Employed for a year. And I get something. I don't actually know what I get for that. I see that there's a refer a friend link here that says, you know, you get money for that, but I've already, maybe that's related to the same thing. I don't know, but check out that link. Please use that if you want to get this program. I really appreciate that. Using affiliate links, I know is something that's kind of controversial. People bitch about affiliates all the time, but as a YouTuber who cares about you guys and wants to produce a lot of content, I need to be able to live a good life that I am happy and I'm in good moods because that's when I am the most enthusiastic. And ultimately that is what everything on my YouTube channel boils down to. It's me being enthusiastic and encouraging you guys to not give up. Because when it comes to changing your life, you're the only but only one who can stop yourself. No one else can stop you unless they kill you. If you're still alive, then you are the one who's in control of your life. You are the one who has to change it, okay? And you can do it. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not a month from now, but if you keep trying, you will get there. Again, I say this over and over again, but that's because it's true. It's not a matter of if you can do it. I hate it when people say, all right, I'm going to give this a month or two to see if it's possible. Because it's not about if it's possible. It's about you give it a month or two to see if you're going to stick with it. To see if you're going to follow through and persevere and stay in the game in the long run. Because that is what leads to success. It's not about figuring out if it's possible. It's about figuring out if it makes sense to integrate this into your regular routine. Okay? Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Ciao.